Hey everybody, it's GED question of the daytime and it looks like we've got some more algebra going on. So let's take a look here. Um, our directions say solve the equation for J. Get out my pen. Solve the equation for J. And what they mean when they say solve the equation for J is they want you to isolate J or get that letter alone on one side of the equal sign. Now, take a look here. Some students freak out when the letter's on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Good news, guys, it doesn't matter if the letter's on the left or the letter's on the right. We are just going to move every single number that's over there with the letter away. So right now, I hope you can see that I actually have two numbers. Uh, hanging out with J. There's this three that's all shoved up against J like that. Uh, when a letter, when a number is all shoved up against a letter in algebra class, they're multiplying. So I have this three that's currently multiplying with J because I know this because there's no space between the three and the J. And then um, I have another number here. Now the 40 is separated by the, from the J with a plus sign. So this 40 is adding with J. So those are the two things I have to get rid of. And you might ask, why am I trying to get rid of them at all? Well, I can't multiply J times 3 because I don't know what the heck J is. I can't add 40 to 3J because, again, I don't know what the heck J is. So I can't do the math I've been asked to do. Uh, my only option here is to get rid of that math and uh, in order to isolate the variable. And here's how we do that. We do that by doing the inverse operation. Basically, we're going to do the opposite of what's happening in order to cancel things out. Opposites cancel out in math class. Okay, but what you should realize is just like back in the day with your order of operations problems that had multiple things going on, if there's more than one number to get rid of, you have got to consider the order of operations, gemma, groupings, then exponents, and remember exponents include those little floating powers and the square root radicals, uh, multiplication, and its inverse. So of course, the inverse of multiplication is division. And then the final thing is addition and subtraction. Okay, now you guys are used to Gemma when you uh, simplify, when you obey the symbols and do the forwards math, you would follow Gemma in that order, groupings, exponents, multiplication, uh, and its inverse, and then addition in its, in, in its inverse. But solving is moving backwards. Solving is undoing math. Instead of doing it, you're undoing. You're doing the exact opposite of what you've been told to do. And because of that, when you're solving, you're actually going to need to work Gemma backwards, work that order of operations backwards. So the first thing you should send packing when you're solving is any number that's adding or subtracting with J. Well, I can see that this 40 is adding with J. So that is the first number I am going to get rid of. I am going to get rid of the 40 first because I want to send anything adding or subtracting. I want to take the terms away first when I solve. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to do the opposite of adding 40. The opposite of adding 40 is subtracting 40. Again, the opposite of addition is subtraction. Now the rule of equations is basically I'm allowed to do whatever I want. The day I got an equation, I could do whatever I want as long as I kept the two sides equal. In order to make sure these two sides are still equal, I'm going to have to do the exact same thing to the left-hand side. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, the two sides will remain equal and I'll be safe. So on this left-hand side, this is the math you're going to do. You're going to do 16 minus 40. Now, if I only have $16 and I go and spend 40, I'm in trouble. I just bounced my checking account. My checking account is down $24 because I spent $24 more than what I had. My equal sign is going to stay steady on this line. And I'm writing what I call the new equation. Sorry. I'm really uh, rushing this lesson. If you... Um, have no experience at all in this subject, you may want to go back and watch my solving two-step equation lesson. I take almost 45 minutes to go through it really slowly. So if this is new to you, um, go ahead and check that out. But anyway, first I did my balance change. I did the same thing on both sides of my equation. And now I'm going to see what my new equation is after I make that change to the left and right hand sides. So on the right hand side, that plus 40 and that minus 40 are opposite. So they're going to cancel out. They're going to zero out. So this is, I have 3j 
I have 3j plus 0, really, but you and I know that when you add 0, it does nothing. So I just have 3j. Okay. Now I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but I'm not quite done because J is not alone. J still has a number hanging out with him. Who's hanging out with J? The three. So I've got to get rid of that three so that J can be alone. Now, the deal is in order to get rid of him, you have to do the opposite of what's happening. So do you remember what we said was happening between three and J? When three and J are all shoved up together like this, it is quite clear that they must be multiplying. And so I'm going to do the opposite of multiply. I'm going to do divide by three. Now I want you to notice... I need you to see this. And in fact, so let me write it in a different color. I'll put my balance change in a different color. It might be good for you to do this in your notes too, so you can tell the difference between balance change and a new equation. But I'm gonna put it in a different color, and I wanna point out to you that when I write divide, I don't use that little symbol for divided by uh, like you guys used to back in the day, like in third grade, I use, um, the another symbol for divided by and it's a fraction bar and for two reasons i want you to pick up the same habit as me i need you to act like a mathematician and use a fraction bar for dividing instead of using this symbol there's a reason for that i got two reasons one the first way this is how it's going to be written on the ged test if they want to do it this is how your algebra teachers are going to write it you might as well get used to it now or you're going to be confused forever so get yourself in the habit of using a fraction bar for divide second reason is because it will make a difference in more complicated problems it doesn't make a difference here but actually later on in math you could actually get a problem wrong if you use the wrong divide by symbol so please we are going to divide both the right and the left hand side by three using a fraction bar now i kind of skimmed over it but i hope you understand why i did the same thing to both sides this is my balance change Again, I can make any change I want to an equation, even doing the opposite of what they told me to do, as long as I do it to both sides. Great, let's see what our new equation is gonna be after this balance change. Well, on this side, that's the math to do. Negative 24 divided by three is negative eight. And on this side, multiplying by three and dividing by three cancels so that my J is alone. Just like I wanted, my letter is alone, so I know that I'm done. This equation is solved. J is equal to negative eight. Okay, great news here. You can do all the negative work with your TI-30 excess calculator. When you are asked to solve equations on the GED, it is always on the section where you have a calculator available to you. So if you found the negatives hard to deal with, the calculator can deal with that for you. Excellent. Um, well, let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to drop them in the comments so we can clarify anything we're struggling with.